And now for chapter four of The Legend of the Star. the convoluted chase to capture Alan Marks, it seems the assassin hired to murder his ex-girl, Dugan, managed to break free from NCR custody. In the meantime, Walter and Bunny use their time to wait for ancient files to transfer to Bunny's Pip-Boy, which may unravel the legend of the star without hunting for blue star bottle caps. I can't believe he did that. Oh my goodness, Courtney! Ah, jeez, he's bleeding, and I think he's been shot. Ah, in my own gun! Sir, sir, sir! Private Courtney's been hit! Medic! Medic! Private Mac? Yes, sir. You died in Boulder City. I remember. Wh what Sir, I don't think... There was nothing left of you by the time we cleared the place. You... You're a fraud. Sir, that's not true. I... Put your hands up. I thought there was something fishy about this transfer from the get-go. There's a... There's really no need to do this, sir. Then if you're so innocent, you'd follow my commands and surrender to me now. Sure, sure, just let me. Yes, yes, indeed, Walter. But the fact of the matter is, it's just not safe for someone like me to take a trip like that nowadays. I could list off a myriad of threats. Legion inflammation. Uh-huh. Powder gangers. Uh-huh. And let's not forget about the Viper and Jackal gangs. Of course, Mr. Cabin. But there's a separation between a detective agency and an escort service. You'd have a better chance employing the NCR. And why not hire on a crew from the Crimson Caravan Company? There's a lot of young men and women eager to build a clientele. They'd be glad to serve you. Now, Walter, you and I both know I have a better chance at striking it big at a slot machine than getting more than two soldiers from the army to protect me. And the Crimson Caravan Company is far too expensive for such a short trip. Oh, hello, Bunny. Hi, Wendell. Got another bad apple in the bunch at your shipping company? No, not exactly. You two did a wonderful job the other week. Even the suspicious ones will think twice before trying anything. No, this job's different, if you'll take it. Mr. Cabin wants us to provide protection for him as he makes his way to Vegas. Really? Why's that? Do you know it's just across the way? Yes, well, I suppose you could say I suffer from a little bit of paranoia, but sometimes it's justified. You both saw that the other week. Uh-huh. The thing is, I'm willing to pay top dollar for just that little waltz to the strip. And besides, this isn't just for me. It's for the company. I'll have a small convoy of Pak Brahman carrying supplies to a new office downtown. I just got approval from Mr. House. I see you, but why are you moving? For exactly what I was chatting Walter's ear up about just a second ago. Times are dangerous, and I think it would be better for the head of the company to be secure until this Hoover madness is old hat. The warehouse will still be active, but I think it's best for the company that I run things elsewhere. Well, I can't blame you from a business perspective. Now look, I'm not going to tell you what to do with your money, but you must understand that this is a somewhat unorthodox request for a pair of private eyes. Ah, that's the kicker. The most relevant reason is that I just so happen to be an occasional collector of Sunset Sarsaparilla Blue Star bottle caps. Look, see? I even made a necklace out of them. 
Ah, this is making a lot more sense now. Exactly. I have a full jar of the suckers in my bag as well. Well, does he know you or that you have them? That's indeed the mystery now, is it? I've been listening to these murders occur over the radio, and I've concluded that this Alan Marks can literally smell when the caps are on you. (sighs) We'll think about it, okay? Right now, we've got our hands full trying to nab the darn fool. Oh, pardon me. I wasn't aware you had company. (gasps) Cynthia! Are you sure you should be walking? With all due respect, Bunny, it's my shoulder, not my leg. Still, it's better you reserve your strength. How are you feeling? Oh, just Jim Dandy. Actually, can I have a smoke? Sure, take mine. Thanks. Who's this? Windle Cabin, ma'am, of Cabin Caravans. I do apologize for your grievous injury. Interesting. Wendell, this is Cynthia, or rather the ex-lover of the man you're hiring us to protect you from. My good gracious. And, and was he the one who did this to you? An extension of him, yes. Ah, well, this only confirms it further. I don't care how much it costs, but both of you will definitely work me into your schedule one way or another. (sighs) All right, all right. Just be ready to wait on our call. We can't guarantee an escort to meet your convenience, so be ready to get on your feet at any time, okay? (sighs) Ah, thank you, Walter and Bunny. In that case, I'll leave you to hopefully... Put a stop to that killer before then. Adieu. What a strange man. He's what you'd call a wasteland upper crust. Except he's one of the nicer ones. If we had a cap for every Brahmin baron who tried to hire us for cover-ups, we'd have enough for a new car. Folks like Wendell check out through. He's just paranoid. So that's interesting. You help out the rich as much as poor old folks like me, huh? Don't get us wrong. We have our boundaries. Right. The NCR is crooked as the day is long. But if the cause is good, we'll offer our assistance. And usually it is if it means giving an uppercut to the Legion. That's why we work through Humphreys most of the time. He's good people. Hmm. Hard for me to poke a hole in that logic. Because there aren't any. People come to us. So whenever a crook does, we shoot them down. Yes? Humphreys! What do you mean? He got out? How so? Just... right through the front door? You've got to be kidding me. What do you mean the guard got shot? By you? Do you think Alan had something to do with it? I see. Darn it. That's rough business. Yeah, yeah, we'll come by and sweat the knucklehead as soon as we wrap up here. All right, Humphreys. Take care. That sounded negative. Indeed it was. (sighs) Lieutenant Humphreys says that Dugan made a break for it at the front gate of McCarran and split. What? That sleaze. But how? How in the most fortified stronghold next to Hoover Dam? That's the kicker. Humphreys says some young soldier playing imposter was on his way escorting Dugan out, and that's when he was caught. The facade almost worked, too. But Humphreys discovered the guy was using the name of a trooper who's been KIA since the first battle of Hoover Dam. Oh my gosh. Dugan plugged some poor trooper with his own heater on the way out. Humphreys confronted the imposter and he tried to make a break for it, but the lieutenant put one in his back. Hope that doesn't mean we have no one to question about this. Nah, it was non-vital. In fact, he's all healed up and sitting in the interrogation room right now. Looks like we're being called to smack him around for answers. (sighs) I've heard of moles infiltrating the inner workings of the NCR, but I wonder if the big cheese, Mr. Marks, had any contact with them. I doubt it. The man's independent as ever be. My money's on Dugan with all the fancy Merc connections. Regardless, we may have a huge military scandal on our hands, and I want your expertise, Bunny. Only thing I'm good for in an interrogation are my fists, and that doesn't get me anywhere. Sin, what about you? Can we trust you to stay here for a time? You have that robot program to look over the place, right? I can understand you not knowing me, but I'm not stupid enough to steal with one good arm. He's not ours. He's the NCR's as a loner. But yes, he'll take care of you while we're gone. That means two things. Jeez, Walter. Lay off the poor girl. I get it, I get it. Message received. 
Sorry, I didn't mean it to come off as such a grim threat. The thing is, the NCR has these Mr. Handy models rigged so sensitive that it could put that miter saw to work if you reached for a can of beans. My best advice? Just lay back and let it do things for you. My dearest apologies, Master Cynthia, but the detectives are right. I'm aware that my modified programming can make the combat functions rather loose. But rest assured, you shall be my queen while you're here. Do you need anything before we leave? No, thank you, Bunny. Only rest. Just be back with a juicy story to tell, huh? I'm tired of your run-off-the-mill war reports. You got it. If it's not classified. Walter, shall we go? Thank you both for coming. I just can't seem to wrap my head around this. We have a strenuous vetting process for everyone that goes in and out of the base. But for someone to let some no-name mercenary out the door like that, and ready to risk his life to let the secret die, this has to have legion ties. I can see that. If Dugan had a loyalty complex, based on our time with him, he's quite the independent. Folks like him are only loyal to money, and it doesn't matter where it comes from or whose blood is on it. I can think of a myriad of reasons why they'd want him out, but if you ask me, our friend in the interrogation room can confirm it for us. But let us not forget, Dugan has a stark rule against military involvement, and I don't think any amount of legion promises can convince him. Let's just get in there and find out ourselves. Do you have anything we should know? Look. All I know is that this fool expects me to believe he's an NCR private who's been blown to shreds at the Battle of Hoover Dam, named Private Burgess Mack. I fought by his side and witnessed him die in an explosion. It's been a bit, but the memories flooded back as I confronted him on his way out of McCarran. Another one of ours, Private Courtney, was processing them out when Dugan grabbed his gun from the holster and let us have it. Courtney's in the medical wing in critical condition. Nothing on Alan yet? <sighs> I hope this isn't a separate case within itself. But then again, Dugan may have a bone to pick with Alan and take him out for us. Exactly what I was thinking. All right, fellas. Let's hang in there. Lieutenant, uh, who's this? Private, this is Detectives Walter Camry and Bunny. They're going to see to the bottom of this better than I ever could. So you might as well call off this charade and come clean now, because these two have never let me down. This isn't a charade, sir. I just... And you can can it with a sir, Palaver. For all I know, you're a civilian in disguise. Now, I know a phony when I see one, and this camp is already on edge as it is. So you'd best fess up, because you won't like the consequences for interlopers in the mix. I don't want to counter with a rebuttal, Lieutenant. I feel as though it would anger you. All I can say is that I plead innocence. Every second you hold out on me is going to anger me, boy. Not you telling the truth. What's your story, Mac? Humphreys tells me you're a ghost by the sounds of it. No, sir. I'm a survivor of the Battle of Hoover Dam. I swear that this is all a big mistake. What was your story at Hoover Dam? <sighs> what can I say beyond I was there to defend the Mojave like everyone else there that day? I think where we have a mix-up is the fate of my squad. We were one of the first to defend the front line when some kind of explosive took them all out. I was lagging behind when that happened, so I didn't get any of it. The rest of it was a blur of gunfighting and smoke. Uh, I got a break from it when we began leading the enemy to Boulder City. After that? A ridiculously horrific cleanup job that none of us will forget. Instead of being reassigned to another squad, the NCR kept me at Hoover Dam for some time until recently. A pretty solid story. I won't question that. The thing is, Private, your story could be bulletproof, but that still doesn't explain your actions yesterday. Yes, why purposely escort a dangerous killer without any orders to do so? As I told my superior here, I received the orders from Lieutenant Boyd. The paperwork's all there. And that's a bald-faced lie! If Lieutenant Boyd ever had a mind to betray the NCR, we'd all be dead right now. Fess up! Why did you help Duke? I was only following orders! Was he a friend of yours? No! Who did he say he worked for? No one! There ain't no such thing as a lawyer anymore, wise guy. 
You were the only lifeline you have between life and custody or a trip to the firing squad. Take your pick. I'm not lying. I'm telling you there's a mishap somewhere high above me. I'm taking the heat for someone else's mistake. How legit was that paperwork, Humphreys? I looked it over with a fine tooth comb and had some of our best eyes at the camp give it a look. There's not a darned difference in this handiwork. I'm doing my best to get this fool to fess up just so we don't tear this place apart, questioning everyone and creating paranoia. Come on, you better give us something. Give it to me straight, Mac. Even if you can't tell us everything, can you at least confirm if a man named Alan Marks had something to do with this? Did you hear his name, even in passing? I give you my word, detective. I haven't. Mm-hmm. Well, Humphreys, unless you want us to apply physical pressure, I don't think the word game will get us anywhere. He's pretty adamant about his innocence. Nah, we'll handle that if push comes to shove. But for now, I want you two to go over his storage and belongings before we try again here. I'll have you question folks who have worked with him on the download just to keep suspicions down. Times are already tense as it is. I hate to see one of the biggest military strongholds in the region under such pressure. Aye, Bunny. We know how much of a target this place is in this war, but that's only from the outside. You let one enemy slip in, the whole operation's in jeopardy. Shall I show you the way? Lead on, Humphreys. Gloria, we have a situation. What's the problem? I don't want to say it out loud. It's on this note here. All right. I see. What is it, Gloria? It seems as though we have a situation on our hands. Who do we need to kill? Oh, killing would be letting them off too easy. No, this idiot got us into this mess. He's about to get us out. Jean, fetch us some of our most skilled hunters and rally a posse. I want a word. Yes, ma'am. Crap tables! No, sir! Ain't. Ain't nobody can beat me at nothing! And soon, I don't even have to go out for drinks anymore! Yeah, I have them all brought to me! Yes, sir! Eh. Uh, who the heck are you folks supposed to be? I says, who the heck are you folks supposed to be? Do you know who I am? You best stand back before I have to do something. If you only knew how fast my finger can move. Ow! 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 Stop! Oh! Let go of me! Alan, Alan, Alan. You messed up good, didn't you? <coughs> Jean Baptiste. So what do I owe the pleasure? Take a wild guess. Excuse me, buckaroo, but my head is swimming and you kind of folks took the liberty of beating my legs in. <laughs> I think I should be asking the questions here. Go ahead. Give me another reason to smack you with this little cattle prod. I, I, I don't know what you want. I thought everything was square between us. Things went south, buddy. And now, 
My sister would like to see you. No, 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 please, I didn't do anything wrong! Move aside, John. I think you received the message. Sure thing. Have you put two and two together yet? I'm sure you've lost enough blood to bring you back to sobriety. Jog my memory then. <coughs> I'm serious. Our agreement, Marx. Our contact's cover was blown. I don't know how, but he's in NCR custody. Oh, that? Well, I don't see how that's my problem. I've got one problem. You've got two. Our deal was based on chance, and you got bad luck. There'd be hell to pay if your little request to bump off Dugan went awry, and it's happened. How hard was that, huh? I don't know. I guess we'll never know since he's going to end up dead by the end of this. But here's where your troubles continue. Dugan kicked rocks, Alan. He's gone. Huh? What? What? Yep. The man's so greasy he managed to run straight out of NCR bonds in broad daylight through the front gate. We don't know exactly what transpired, but I heard it was pretty messy. Oh, no. Then... Why, did? Because our agent isn't dead. Not yet. I'm surprised I'm even letting you skedaddle. But the only thing separating you from a hot death is the army not knowing about this. Uh, How do you know we have spilled the beans? Because there aren't soldiers at our door. In any case, we'd have our agents off themselves to prevent blowing the lid. But if ours were to do that now, the NCR could very well smell our blood in the water. Oh, where do I come in? Easy. You do the dirty for us. What? That's right. Waltz on in there and clap the mole any way you see fit. Don't get that look. I'm sure your seasoned recon skills will help you slip in easy. (laughs) So, you really expect to somehow break into the most fortified NCR headquarters just after they caught a rat. Prisoner escaped. Ah, <laughs> uh, I thought you would say that. Jean, do you have that bag of caps you found on our friend here? Yeah, let's dispose of those. No! No! Wait! Please! No! 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 You monsters! Look at that. Already a few steps behind your little treasure hunt. Just like that. Here's the deal, friend. You took a risk, and it went bust. That's why it's called a risk. Now you've got two options. Die right here in this chair, while you're so close to sunset sarsaparilla stardom. Or... Take a chance and kill our guy on the inside. If you pull it off, you take the spotlight right off us. So what's it gonna be? We'll return to our mystery after this. Have you ever wondered how deep the Elder Scrolls lore rabbit hole goes? Have you got a grasp of the basics and want to find out more about the universe? Written in Uncertainty is here to help you. We'll be mixing in philosophy, theology and whatever other theory is useful with Elder Scrolls texts to untangle some of the biggest questions in the series, like what are Dragon Breaks, how does Chim work, where did the Dwemer go and more. Check us out at writteninuncertainty.com or find Written in Uncertainty on any podcatcher. Thanks for listening, and catch you later in the grey maybe of Tamriel. And now, back to our story. (laughs) 
Shall I refill this later? No, thank you, Picky. I think I'm gonna turn in for the night after this one. Of course, ma. <sighs> Sheesh, that hurts. Huh? Walter? Bunny? Come on, come on. All right. Keep it up and I'll blow a hole through this door. from my scope. It was you! You tried to kill me! Blame the wind for that nasty injury on your arm. But don't worry. I've come to fulfill my contract. You handle quite well under duress, girl. I have to applaud you there. Oh, I'm no stranger to the trigger finger. I see. Well, the only question now is... Who is quicker here? I think it's going to be me. You can't run forever, sister. Picky! Picky! Come help me! No one here to save you now. Best expose yourself and save the drama. It's useless. Shut up! Come on! Hello? Where are you? Shot didn't kill him. He must have fled. You wanted to do it the hard way, huh? Well, how's about I strangle you to get the point across? It's useless, wise one. My inability to leave the past behind has put this great journey in jeopardy in a matter of days. And it's all my fault. What I'm saying is, things ain't go well with the Van Graffs, and now the only way to pay them back is to pull a suicide mission. But I can't risk it, can I? Now, there's probably a vengeful sniper roaming the waste, sniffing for my blood. Stack on top of that, Walter... Buddy and the NCR, they want my head on a platter. To be honest, it seems the only reason we're here right now is because the proper people couldn't do things right. And I'm paying for it in the end. Now, the only thing separating me from any of them parties is what you can grant from me. Please, let there be a one-way ticket to the moon behind those doors. By my hat, you're flush with stars, ain't you? Scratch up a few more and the prize is yours. Well, what in the Sam Hill are you doing still listening to me? Get a wiggle on it. Find those last few stars. Uh, close. So close doing anything else would be pointless. <sighs> Even stepping foot in the Mojave once more is a fool's move. <sighs> and I've run out of leads.
I'm not known for being paranoid, let alone skeptical, but it's getting hard for me to differentiate Legion involvement versus everything else now. You're preaching to the choir, sister. This imposter situation really has Humphreys in a bind worse than anything else. I mean, a man impersonating a dead soldier he once knew? Legion seems the most probable, so who else could it be? You're right. It is the most probable if you consider their outreach and organization. But there's one thing you have to consider. What's that? Legion boys are trained to kill themselves if capture is imminent. If you ask me, Private Mac would have found a way to do so the moment he was snuffed out. Well, you have a point there. Gosh, that's so grim. It is. Almost did it once myself. Brainwashing is one heck of a thing. Let's see how Sin's doing. Hopefully it wasn't too boring for her. <gasps> what the? Just what in the heck happened here? Sin! Sin, are you okay? Uh, I'm okay, Bunny. I'm okay. No new injuries besides some bruising. Just look at this place. This agency looks just the way we found it when we moved here. Gosh, someone really came by and lit the place up good. I'm responsible for most of those. If you folks hadn't left one of your guns on the desk, I wouldn't have stood a chance. As long as you're still breathing, it's no biggie. But you must have thought mighty quick to survive something like this. But, but, was it Alan? What exactly happened? <sighs> no, it wasn't. It was the guy he sent after me. Dugan? He made it pretty clear it was him. Mr. Picky just poured me a drink for the night and the guy tried breaking through the door. I scrambled for a weapon and I got the gun from your desk drawer. When I gave him a threat, the psycho broke through the window instead and we had a standoff. I shot first, then I took cover in one of the hallway rooms while he stayed in the main room. Oh my. We popped shots at each other until he pretended to get hit. Come to find out he didn't, but I was already back in the main room by then. He hid somewhere and lunged at me and pinned me down on the couch to strangle me. Ugh. Would have had a better chance to resist too if my arm weren't so busted up. But anyway... Picky heard the commotion in the next room and rushed to help me. You should give that robot a raise. He pulled out that buzzsaw of his and sliced the man across his side. Thank goodness he was here. We almost sent Picky back home yesterday. Where is he? I don't know. He chased him and chased him until he was out of sight. Well, let me call Humphreys and let him know the assassin was last seen here. Do you think he'll come back? I doubt he'd risk it. Now I'd say he's coming after Alan for his second bout of revenge. Well, for all our sakes, let's hope he can follow through with Alan. Yes, uh, put me through to Humphreys. Yes. Lieutenant. Yes, uh, we're fine now. Uh, hey, I hate to report it, but Cynthia was paid a visit by Dugan late last night, uh, sometime after we left the base. Mm-hmm. The agency took a beating, but Sin held her own against the lunatic. She says Mr. Picky ran him off after giving him a good slice of the gut and disappeared into the night. I just thought you would like to know. That's good, Walter. That's very good. If the robot didn't get scrapped by that hitman, we can check if its tracker is still working to find out where he is. Keep in touch. You hear that, friend? We already have our dogs nipping at the tail of whatever pathetic syndicate you boys got running. You're talking to someone who has no clue, sir. Yeah, you keep saying that. But just remember, every second you don't fess up is a second that makes you look even worse. Worse from what? <laughs> I said to stop playing poor, you scam artist! If this were over something different, I would have gone easier. But portraying a dead man of honor? I'm surprised I haven't shot you yet. <sighs> You've already broken... Tons of protocol treating me this way! And you haven't? Now be a good boy and stay put. I have killers to catch. Come on. Come on. What's the password? Plasma. This is Gloria. Who are you and where are you calling from? Gloria, it's me, Jerry. Jerry? Oh, can I assume you made it out of NCR headquarters in one piece? Very odd of you to reach out to me via ham radio. Made it out? I'm still in here. 
Was... was someone aiming to get me out? You mean you didn't escape on your own? How do you have access to the radio in there? I don't. I'm in an interrogation room. Idiot lieutenant left it in here. He was just talking to a detective on it. Says that sniper took a swipe at some girl or something. So wait, you're saying no one came by to see you today? No! Uh, what someone was supposed to? I, nothing like this has happened before. Well, now we know who to pay a visit to. Hello? What do you mean? Yeah, Jerry? I did have someone planned to pick you up one way or another, but it looks like they're a no-show. So... So, someone else is coming, right? I can't stay here. I, I'm a sitting duck. Listen, Jerry, I'm sure if you switch perspectives for a moment, you'd understand how risky it was attempting to send someone after you. Yes, I, I know. And with things the way they are, you also understand why I can't afford to do it again. So... so I... You know what to do. We all took the same oath to protect company secrets at all costs. You wouldn't want to put the silver rush, let alone the family business, in jeopardy, would you? No, no I wouldn't, but I... Then what is there to argue about? I know it seems you found yourself in an uncomfortable position, but I hope you know, if they make you squeal, everything we've ever worked for will be under threat. I... Your brothers and sisters will likely die in the ensuing conflict with the NCR, thanks to your selfishness. And you best believe our eradication will spread to California. And don't you think I didn't try? The very man who put us up to this was supposed to get you, but I guess he felt we weren't important enough. But don't you worry. We'll deal with him soon enough. You still there, Jerry? Uh, yeah. Make it quick, my friend. Don't let them win. But, uh, Gloria, I, I don't have a cyanide pill. Gloria! Gloria! What the heck are you doing touching my radio? Stand up! Now! Hey! Let go of me! Okay, fella. You asked for it! I can't thank you both enough, Walter and Bunny. I knew this would be quite the burden on you, based on the current circumstances, but no one else would offer me a deal that I could both agree with and trust. Don't worry about it, Wendell. We've needed an excuse to get some fresh air. And to get our minds off the Marks case. Who knew that caps would be so difficult? Ah, but value is the real motivator, my friend. What do you mean, Wendell? Well, I suppose if you boil it down, the only reason we even so much as care for inanimate objects like money is the value we put in it. It's what keeps any economy going. Even now, in the wasteland, Alan was promised wealth beyond his imagination in these stars, and he's willing to kill over it. But the real kicker is that Alan doesn't even know what's at the end of the tunnel here. But just think on it. Had this been in less desperate times, I doubt any of this would be happening. For all we know, the treasure is a rotten old farce completely useless in our time. But look around you. You'll be killed over a, a dirty bottle of water nowadays. And the promise of resources you don't even have to survive for. Only by collecting caps like a scavenger hunt. <laughs> My mouth would water too. But what I don't understand is how long the legend's been around, and yet we seem to have one man willing to do this. Well, it's a new market, Walter. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if other treasure hunters got any bright ideas from this chap. I suppose you're right. Someone's got to be a trendsetter. <sighs> There's nothing like dust settling in behind the Lucky 38 Tower. Indeed. Perhaps Vegas can be the new Wall Street. 
once everything comes back down, of course. I'd sure like a hand in it. A gambling town like this. A perfect setting. Calms down? Yes. I'm sure even lawmen like yourselves can see life breathing on the landscape in the future. No? I don't... Hmm. Well, I guess I never really thought about that. Neither have I, but I suppose if places like Vegas can still survive this mess, there's glimmers of hope. Soon, though, I doubt it. Ah, uh, I'm sure it'll be a slow start, but a sure reality all the same. I feel like I miss civilization, despite the fact that I haven't lived in one. Oh, how I envy your time in the vault, Bunny. Ah! We're taking fire! The Brahmin are tipping over! <gasps> Everybody hang on! Where is it coming from? Right side. Everyone stay covered behind the Brahmin. Ugh, I can't even take a peek. There's lasers all over the place. Get your guns ready, but hold your fire, everyone. He has to reload at some point. Oh, don't worry about me. Oh, detectives! Mr. Cabin. You made me a very angry boy, you know. It's Alan. How did he know my name? He's a merc, sir. Intel is his specialty. Sorry about them pack, Brahmin. They look really expensive. Not as expensive as something I want, though. Keep your heads down, folks. I'm so close to the end, detectives. The all-knowing Festus made it abundantly clear to me! Oh, yeah? Then why waste your time with us? Don't be a fool, Camry. Think about it. All the enemies you made in a matter of days only applied more pressure. I used to hunt in peace. But now, I'm a sensation! <laughs> You want me, the NCR wants me, and now probably- He asked what it is the hell you want, now spill it! Don't test me, girl! Now look, I don't have much time and my finger is twitchy. You got a lot of expensive garbage attached to those cows. And I only want one thing, Mr. Cabin. Your collection. <laughs> collection? But, but what does he mean? Your star caps, Wendell. He's the guy we've been talking about. The, the cap killer? That's what you want from me? And you better make it snappy. Too many ears in the Mojave these days. I, I, he doesn't really expect me to walk out there, does he? No, Wendell, you don't. Do you really have some stars on you? I do. My ears are cute for this sort of thing. Are those, are those beautiful blue stars I hear clinking over there? Yes, they are. Now listen here, Alan. I know you're here for us, but we're here to protect a client. Take a swipe at us again if you want to, but not here. Just take this useless aluminum and you can go. Deal? Correction. I'm not here for you. But for something that matters, the caps, I'll give you this, detectives. Your efforts ate enough of my time to try anything more with you. So, consider yourselves lucky. Now, I said it. Make it snappy! Go ahead, Wendell. Toss it. Right. Here you go, cretin. Ah, that wasn't so hard, was it? Seems heavy enough. Maybe just enough to please mighty Festus. <laughs> what do we do? Take him down now? I don't want to risk it. Not with Wendell here. We know how quick he is with those laser guns. Hey, we're not too far off from the telephone. I say we wait for him to book it, and already have an NCR squad ready for him at the Sunset Sarsaparilla HQ. Good thinking, Bunny. Let's just hope he fulfills what he said. Don't move, Marx. Hey, watch where you're pointing that thing! I know exactly where I'm pointing this thing, you double-crossing creep! Who is this now? It's Dugan! He has Alan at gunpoint! Don't you get any bright ideas, Dugan? Bright ideas? Me! You set me up with the NCR, the one force I said I didn't fiddle with, and then you left me to die behind their walls. Ah, I, I sent someone after you, I swear. I just didn't hear back from them. Yeah, probably to have me killed. I'm not as cracked as I look, Marx. No, it was your fault to keep going along with it, don't you see? No, you sprung that lieutenant on me out of nowhere is what you did. I had no choice but to keep going along with it. What is it we do? Let them solve our battle for us. 
From the moment he walked in, he had me identified. Now that I've been processed in McCarran, I can never run away. You hear me? Never! That ain't true, Dugan. Here I am, a free man. Known by the whole world, just about. You can make it work. You! Telling me how to operate. <laughs> Look at you! You're a whole mess. Armor covered in grime and a face with a thousand yard stare. All within a few days. That's what getting your card marked looks like. Don't you see? And now, I'm gonna punch it. Did he... Did he kill him? It's Cynthia. She shot Dugan. Guns out! Just what is going on now? Stay down, Wendell. This could get ugly. Oh dear. Sin. You... You shot him. Thank you. Oh, don't thank me, you twisted monster. I've had just about enough of this madness. Do you have any idea how much stress and pressure you've put on me since you started this rampage? I... I thought... You thought what? That I came here to rescue you? No. Call it woman's intuition, but I just so happened to feel something would happen on this caravan run. Dugan, though? No. That was for me. What do you mean? I mean, the worm tried to have me killed twice. Ho oh, and the detectives told me everything. I know you hired him to snipe me up on that balcony. What's the matter, Alan? Not man enough to do it yourself? After all the people you've killed? Cynthia, you... you know I can't do that. But having someone else do it? Why? Huh? Why? Because I couldn't do it, okay? I couldn't look you in the eye and do it. You're at a disadvantage then, because I'm more than ready to plug you right now. How could you do it, Alan? All the chaos you've made over nothing! It's not... nothing! You... We did what we had to do to get by, like everyone else. But it had merit! With this, you're no better than a raider! What would your mother think? Hey! Don't go there! Why? You've gone this far. Drop the gun, Alan. Make the wrong move and I put one in your eye. I... 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 What's it going to be, Marks? Just... just let me! Oh, I know exactly how it's going to be. Cynthia, no! Open fire! Oh my goodness! <laughs> Sin? Are you hit? <sighs> of course. He can't kill me. That perp sure knows how to book it. Looks like everyone's okay. Mr. Cabin, how are you? <sighs> if I didn't just have a heart attack, yeah. Then it looks like we need to make that phone call, Bunny. I'm sure he's heading straight for the headquarters. No need for that, if you ask me. Why? Look on the ground. First bullet hit the bag in his hand. <gasps> Look! Talk about a lucky shot! He didn't walk away with a single cap. I think I just bought you some time, detectives. After nearly tasting the Sunset Sarsaparilla treasure, Alan Marks is now a huge step backward. How far will he go to get back on track? And how long does he have with all the enemies he's made? And what's going to happen with the NCR Mole, now exposed? Find out how it all ties together in the thrilling finale of The Legend of the Star. Today's episode of True Vault Escapades was written and produced by Preston Hardin, edited and mixed by Ethan Walsh. The part of Walter was played by Eric Huffman, Bunny and Cynthia by Crystal Romero, Lieutenant Humphreys and Mr. Picky by Philip Sacramento, Alan Marks by Joshua L. Belmonte, Dugan by Forrest Lee, Windell Cabin by Mike Tyson, Gloria Van Graff by Kari Schultens. Private Mark by Corey Kohler. Jean-Baptiste by Harrison Bullman. And the Van Graff Thug by Austin Rogers. To Hayden Kincaid, George Stocko, Michael D. Batku, and Joel Jackal, we at True Vault Escapades and A-Bomb Radio thank you dearly for your amazing support. 
We especially have to point out you, Michael and Joel. You both have been with us the longest. If you would like to support our detectives, consider joining our Patreon, buying merch, or by rating and reviewing the podcast right now. Everything you need can be found in the link below. We'd also like to thank Pamela Fernie and everyone over at Far From Heaven, a Fallout 76 podcast, and the Robots Radio Network. Keep us on your radar, dear listener. You wouldn't want to miss the next one. Only on True Vault Escapades. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net. Are you an avid player of the Elder Scrolls Online and looking to take your game to that next level? Well, the Red Diamond Courier Podcast is here to help. I'm Bob Chichinsky. And I'm Dogbark24. We are two experienced players aiming to help others learn and improve through in-game knowledge and references. From PvE to PvP and everything in between. There's sure to be something for you in the Red Diamond Courier. We, we hope, hope you check, check us, us out. out. Thanks! Thanks. In a world where solid-state electronics and vacuum tubes are still meta, people never stop loving atomic-powered everything. A chosen 500 stepped inside a subterranean vault to be spared the nuclear horror of the inevitable Great War. 25 years later, they emerge after the fallout settles to retake Appalachia. Among them, two former rivals whose blood feud will tear West Virginia apart in their epic struggle for survival. Chad, a vault bro who has a strength of 15, an intelligence of 2, and is a complete wasteland dickhead. Simon, a complicated anti-hero who chooses light and hope, but accidentally becomes a cannibal and wakes up naked and afraid with a Scorch Beast Queen after a date goes terribly wrong. What? I mean, it's a wild wasteland, right? This dark humor radio drama will have you driving off the road and crawling out from under the fallout. Two men. One wasteland. And so many nukes. Chad, a Fallout 76 podcast. Rated R. Now streaming on your holotape player podcasty thing.